so it is a beautiful morning in the south of France, a, a rather late start for a few people as uh, I fear it was a rather late night for some of them last night. Um, but one or two of us who went to bed a bit earlier are down here and raring to go. The 38 Super Sport I arrived on yesterday is up and running. So uh, we're going to give that one a whiz out and catch up with the other guys later. Okay, so it's my turn behind the wheel. We've got 740 horsepower in this boat and it weighs barely three tons. So this, I feel, is likely to be interesting. Now the instructions I've been given, knock it into gear. There's so much power there that you've got to build it on fairly sensibly. So it's a case of picking the revs up, taking it up to about 3,000 RPM and then waiting for the boat to catch up. You can actually feel it there. It's suddenly it's gripped and it's up and it's planing. Now we can start to wind the trims out. So I'm taking the trims up to about 11%. That is now cantering across the surface at 34 knots. 34 knots in this boat is insulting it really. Because what it wants to do is this. That's 40 now. And at 40 knots, you've got a huge slug of acceleration left. If I hit the throttle at 40, this is what it does. So that's 40. 42, 44, 46, 48, 50, 52, 54, 56, and I'm backing off. It is just astonishing. But I think the most overwhelming feeling of driving this boat, and I've had it go on it a couple of times now, is the expression that I tend to overuse a little bit. And that is confidence inspiring. This boat isn't just confidence inspiring, it absolutely defines the term. It feels brilliant. You can cruise this at 45 knots, which is what we're doing now, and it really will do this all day. Not just the boat will do it all day, but the crew will too, because you're sat in a really well located seat. The helm is in a great position. It's a bolster, so you're taking the shock through your legs. But actually, I say taking the shock through your legs, there is virtually none. It is a fantastic hull and it really soaks up the topography. In fact, I learned fairly quickly that when you get a bit of a big shot, sometimes it'll go better through it faster than it does slower. So what this boat does, above all else, is absolutely monstrous distances. If you want to go somewhere 50 miles away, it'll take you about an hour. It's like a waterborne executive jet. So we have just anchored for lunch in the beautiful Paul Crow. Absolutely stunning place and I thought it would be a good opportunity to give you a quick guided tour of this boat. So if we hop on, as you can see, it is a very narrow, serious, high performance machine. But actually it's surprisingly practical as well. So if we step on at the front here, there's a big storage area underneath here and then a nice big deck area at the front. You've got some forward facing seating here, again, Lots of storage underneath there, fenders, ropes, that kind of stuff. There's good access down both sides of the boat. Past the centre console. This centre console actually gives a surprising amount of protection when you're running fast. And this is the bolster seats that I was telling you about. You can have different versions of seating on this boat. This boat's got the twin bolsters and then there's actually a fridge in the top here. And then at the back, this seat facing backwards uh, this will actually drop flat if you want more space or you can have a table that goes in the centre here so that you can sit either side for having a meal some pad at the back and of course your monster engines underneath there now uh, inside the boat there's not a tremendous amount uh, it does have a cuddy there's sleeping for two it's used mainly for storage so uh, this is what you find inside and, uh, and there's also a sea toilet underneath there, electric flush, which is obviously a, a very helpful thing to have. So uh, it is all about day boating really, but you can overnight and you have got masses of storage. There's also a massive bimini that goes across the whole boat if you want it. I'll give you a quick look at the engines. So 
So these are the motors. They are Mercury 370 horsepower. Uh, and they are based around the VW Audi block. So it's a V8 4.2 litre. And what's interesting, of course, is the way that they're fitted because they're a staggered configuration, uh, which puts the engines, rather than being side by side, it puts them much more on the center line. And that does two things. It keeps the weight in the middle of the boat, but it also keeps the weight low because by having the outdrives closer together, it allows you to sink the engines deeper into the V of the hull. Uh, and that's a big part of just how stable this boat is when it's running at high speed. The engineering down here as well is very nice. It's all beautifully finished. The inside is all flow coated. Um, and it is generally a pretty accessible and pretty neatly installed engine space, which for a boat of this type is, uh, is nice to see. So we've had a really good long lunch. Uh, everybody's feeling good, the sun's out, weather's warm, and I have a new steed for the afternoon, uh, which is the Goldfish 29 Sport, this boat in front of me here. Now this is exactly the same DNA as the one I was on this morning but everything's scaled back down. So it looks very similar, performs very similar, but it is a smaller boat at a obviously lower price point. So we're gonna hop on, give this one a go and see how it compares. Does appear to be full of semi-naked men. Oh well. Guys have dived in swimming, and who can blame them? I've decided to be a little bit more British about it. I'm having a little paddle. Worst places to do it, though. So I'm on quite a rare boat at the moment. This is the Goldfish SC30 I'm stood on. They only made this for a short period of time. It launched in 2007 and finished in 2008 due to the recession. They only ever made 19 of these. This is the only one in France. And actually it's a really cracking looking boat. Real timeless lines to it. Next to us then, we have got the 29 Sport that we came across on just a moment ago. Next to that is the 38 Super Sport I was on earlier. And then next to that one is another 38 Super Sport. That's one with massive petrol engines in it. So uh, quite an interesting collection of goldfish here at the moment and certainly very eye-catching. So this is the other 38 Super Sport. This one's fitted with four bolster seats for high-speed running for four people. And under the back, you've got a pair of big block V8 Mercruiser petrol engines. They're 8.2 litres each. They're 420 horsepower each. 
and I've been told they give the boat over 70 knots. The two goldfishes, the 29 and the 38, are heading out for a drone photo shoot. So uh, I've been dispatched to the SC30. We're pulling in the anchor and we're going to head this one down to back to Poor Crow, I think, for a quiet drink while we wait for the guys to finish. So here we go. <laughs> the end of the day and uh, we're just about to head back to Le Lavandu and uh, had a very nice pizza at a beachside um, sort of cafe and hopefully I'm gonna get a little drive of the 29 on the way back so I can give some impressions of that one as well so uh, all in all not a bad day and here are the boats to rock and roll. back safe and I've learned one thing this evening is that Norwegians not only make fantastic fast boats they know how to drive them too that was a very fast crossing I think that's enough adventures for today and we're going to uh, call it a night have another go tomorrow